Dark Dove back with you again, uh, back to the vinyl uh, after my last video, which was entirely um, focusing on a haul of Pink Floyd CDs which I made. Um, one of my slowest viewed videos to date, um, <laughs> so uh, hopefully this one does a bit better, and, uh, and have a look at the, the, the last video, if, um, especially if you're a Pink Floyd fan. Um, I'm going to show um, both charity shop finds and a, a haul from a record fair which I made over the last month, or maybe last month or two months, month and a half, since the start of the new year anyway. So um, um, <clears throat> I'm going to start off with some, I, th I'm going to start off with a haul which I made uh, I made a trip to a, there's a town called Cove, which is just outside of Cork City. Uh, Jimmy Earl of Swab, you will be well familiar with it. Um, you visited it um, along with myself and Ben Costello <coughs> last year. Uh, Cove, famous for being the last stop of the Titanic before its fatal voyage. Um, I just went out there on the train and for mosey around, went to a charity shop and made some very nice finds. Um, one shop uh, did quite a bit of vinyl. Um, uh, everything there was three euros, which is slightly higher than average for charity shops, but uh, I did make a couple of very nice finds. Um, first up, uh, we have the Stranglers. Um, a 1981 album um, the title is sorry, uh, the Men in Black or the is it, yeah the Gospel according to the Men in Black. Now I I don't have anything like the Stranglers are a band who I don't kind of set out to collect them. Um, I don't actually have any vinyl by them in my collection up to this, but um, but I saw this and um, I do like the Stranglers. Um, but um, I don't really kind of set out to collect them as such. But uh, okay, so this is kind of a an unusual one for them. Um, it's on Liberty, uh, so it's from 1981. Um, a lot of the song tracks on this are instrumental, or they're kind of um, or partially instrumental. Um, all some of the tracks almost have a kind of a proggy kind of feel to them. Um, what is the title? First track again. Um, Waltz in Black, the, the opening track. Um, I remember it used to be the, the theme music to um, uh, there was this TV chef called um, uh, well, Keith Floyd, a British TV chef, but th this program he did on TV used that as the theme music. It's, um, but yeah, it's kind of a concept album about alien abductions and men in black, uh, done a good 15 or 16 years before the movie of the same title. But um, very interesting find. Um, didn't previously have any stranglers in my collection, but this is. Um, a very worthy addition. Um, second find was a bit of classical. Um, uh, David Wilde's uh, Liszt, Liszt recital, a Liszt um, Hungarian um, composer. Um, nice piano music on um, uh, his master's voice, uh, late 60s, I think. Um, uh yeah, it's a nice pickup. Um uh very worthy addition to the um my ever growing classical collection. Um now the third pickup, very, very interesting, uh turns out to be an extremely rare and collectible item. Um wasn't familiar with this at all. I was looking at it, um then I just noticed um, one name that I recognize. Um, um, see there, it's kind of uh, Gary Peacock on bass. 
Um, this is called um, it is sorry, it's called Silver World and it is by um um Hosan Yamamato, a Japanese um uh, flatulist, um flute virtuoso and this is best described as um kind of new age uh, minimalist jazz very much kind of in the e mold of what you'd find on ECM um now Gary Peacock is on bass um also has um oh Matsubumi Kikuchi on piano and Hiroshi Mura Murakami on drums, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing those names correctly, but uh, it, it originally came out in 70, 72, I think. Um, this is a, a repress from 1977, a French uh, reissue, and uh, it turns out this, this goes for quite a lot online. Um, I think at the, at the moment on Discogs, the lowest, the cheap, the lowest price copy is something like 80 euros uh, so I picked it up for three um, so it's on Phillips uh, it didn't have an inner bag so I had to get a had to get one for it um, it does have a nasty looking scratch um, I don't know if you can, yeah, you can maybe make it out there uh, but uh, I'm sorry one but uh, it plays fine there's just a couple of there's a couple of brief pops basically um, but this is a keeper I, I am definitely keeping this I'm not selling it um, this is fantastic it's a really 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 good album and um, so uh, Barry Gary Peacock uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with him and uh, brilliant bass playing from him and um, yeah it's just brilliant new age um, uh, Eastern influenced um, Kind of minimalist jazz, as I said, quite quite in the vein of um, kind of an ECM um, kind of a feel to it. Um, so very nice find for three euros, uh, which is maybe about three fifty US dollars, I think roughly. Um, <clears throat> okay, so on the same day, uh, I was I came back on the train back to the city. And I decided I would pop it in to um, a shop, which is on the way back from the train station. It's a it's a music shop, and uh, they do have secondhand vinyl in there. Uh, I've picked up quite a bit of. I, I made my big metal haul there last year. I, I think I, I showed that uh, last year. Um, a lot of new stuff out. Mo all, most, almost all of it classical, but I've made a couple. One particular find, uh, I leave to last. Okay, so th th these were all one euro. Um, uh, very nice album of Gregorian chant um, uh, from a French monastery. Um, Recorded in the early 60s. Um, I'm not sure when this exactly came out though. This uh, surely the label. Um, it's on a, it's on a, a label called um, Peters. Uh, looks like late 60s, early 70s. But um, yeah, it's very, very nice um, album of Gregorian chant. Um, uh, it's called Ma Masses for Easter, and um, yeah, this is the, uh, the the monastery where the um, where it was recorded. So um, nice pick up, um, and also uh, picked up this. Um, this guy, uh, another flute album, um, Virtuoso Flute Concerti, uh, by this guy, his name is um, 
John, John Weon, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, two very works by two obscure German composers who I'd never heard of before from the 19, early 19th century. Um, early or mid mid 70s release, I think, and um, a record label, which is from Jimmy Earl of Suave Country, New Jersey. Um, the label uh, Musical Heritage Society, one I'd never come across before. So um, yeah, nice, nice um, flute music. Uh, now the next find again, again is another mega rarity. Um, bear with me. Uh, straight away saw this um, composer's name, uh, Olivier Messiaen, a uh, French avant-garde 20th century composer. Uh, I've very little by him. I've one or two pieces by him on CD, but uh, nothing on vi on vinyl. Um, that's, that's Ben Costello. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I can't answer it then. Um, and um, yeah, so Olivier Messiaen, a French composer, uh, died in around 2001 or 2002, I think. This is a, this is a piece, a composition from the 1930s called um, La Na Nativity de du Signeur. And this is um, organ music. Um, this it, it's on Superfun. That um, Czech label. Uh, this is also very rare. And, um, goes for quite a bit uh, online as well. And um, picked it up for just one euro. Um, lovely cover design as well. And I'm very happy to pick this up because it's very very little by o Olivier Messiaen. Uh, it can be very uh, difficult to find in the wild, uh, especially on vinyl. Um, so, um, extremely pleased with those pickups, which are all done in the one day in um, two different locations. Uh, now, I'm going to move on to um, record fair pickups. Um, the record fair from about three weeks ago I think it was um, um, three different sellers and um, I've made some very nice pickups some stuff that I've been looking for some real big want list items others and um, some slightly more common stuff but I'll go through them all now this is something I'm a big Smiths fan uh, but I have to admit um, I've never Collected um, Morrissey's solo output. Um, I did see Morrissey live uh, back in 2008, but um, uh, I picked this up. This is a debut solo album. I, I remember it well when it came out. I remember the big, big 1988. I think it was, it was what, 13 or 14. I had a couple of big hit singles. Um, Every day is like Sunday, Suede Head. Uh, 1988 came out on EMI. Uh, it's an original UK pressing. Now, I got this really, really cheap. I actually got it for just four euros. Uh, the reason why I got it so cheap is that um, it does have a nasty looking scratch on. Yes, maybe you can see it there um, on the side, the yeah, side two. Um, where is it? There it is. Just where my finger is. Uh, looks looks very nasty. Um, yeah, you get a few clicks uh, basically. Um, like it's not a deep scratch, but it does look bad. Um, but it doesn't affect the play too much. Um, you know, you do you get a few clicks and um, through um there's one song in particular, um is it grey? 
to break up the family, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, still, uh, still four euros, even even with the scratch on it, it is, is really, really good um, price for that. Um, Rob Paniques, if you're watching, I know you're, you're a big Morrissey fan. Um, I mean, I, I do like Morrissey's solo output. I, I'm more of a Smiths fan. But, um, yeah, this is, I think, one of his better ones. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, so that's, that's the first of the record fair pickups. And I'll just move on quickly because I've got quite a lot of stuff to show. Um, Joni Mitchell album that I was missing. Um, Clouds. Um, is there a second album? Second or third? Uh, Rigid came out in '69. Uh, this is a second UK pressing from '71 uh, on reprise. Um, yeah, I've been, been trying because uh, she she's one artist who um, is seriously underrepresented in my collection. So I have been trying to to grab um, anything by her that I see. Um, a great cover. Um, yeah, lovely, lovely album. Um, I, I'm sure most of you have it, so I uh, won't go into it too much, as is the case with the next one. Um, again, a very common album which I was missing from my collection. Um, Stevie Wonder, Talking Book. Um, you know, what can I add about this? 1972, it's one of that classic run of albums which he released in the early 70s on Motel. Um, you no, know, which made full use of the Moog synthesizer. Um, uh, UK pressing, I, I think it's an original UK press. And this, this is pretty cheap. Um, so, uh, yeah, so. Uh, it's br brilliant songs on this. Um, again, uh, again, I don't won't dwell too much on it because because um, I'm sure most of you already have it. Um, now, a few big want list items. Um, Klaus Schulze, Black Dance. Um, have a lot of Klaus Schulze, but this is one that I was missing. Um, this came out, and I think, I think it came out in '74. Uh, this is a later UK repress from the '80s. From I think around the '84 repress, so it's got that. Um, those 80s coloured labels and it's absolutely mint condition. Stunning. Stunning copy. Uh, yes, this is a fantastic um, synthesizer, early electronic album from you know one of the masters of the genre, um, Klaus Schulze. Um, from his, I mean, he just released this absolutely amazing run of albums in the um, early part of the 70s. Um, so I had been missing this. I do have several of his other albums from this period. Uh, there's, I'm still missing Time Wind as well. Uh, that's one I am looking to pick up too. But um, finally have this one in my mix. <coughs> Okay, um, another really common album which uh, which I picked up. Um, Tomita Snowflakes are dancing. Um, uh, apparently, it's very very common in, in the states, but um, this is one I, I had picked up some other stuff by him in charity shops, but uh, I had been missing this one, uh, so I picked it up cheaply at the record fair. Um, Snowflakes are dancing. Uh, I think came out in '72 or thereabouts. Um, so um, you know, so yeah, pioneering um, early Moog synthesizer album. 
Um, uh, won't go into it too much because, um, yeah, very, very, very common, but um, just one I dropped off my want list. Um, no. Uh, I guess a couple of other items. Kevin Coyne. Um, Kevin Coyne is an artist who I don't see in the wild very often. Um, for those of you not familiar with him, um, he is very hard to categorise. Um, he's kind of a left of field blues kind of um, cabaret um, singer. Um, died in, I think, died in about 2000. I think uh, this came out in 1974 on Virgin. So that um, coloured Virgin label. Um, this is called um, Blame It on the Night. Uh, absolutely love Kevin Coyne. Um, fantastic. Um, artists, um, uncompromising, very kind of angry, uh, brilliant lyricist, and very, very unique voice. Um, uh, he, he did a lot of albums with his wife, Dagmar Kraus, a German singer. There's still quite a, a lot of his stuff that I'm looking for. Um, uh, hard enough to find in the wild, but... Um, uh, picked that up, but it was gone for a fairly nice enough price uh, as well. Um, again, <laughs> uh, another want list item knocked off my list, and I'm getting very close to completing my Talking Heads collection now. Um, Talking Heads 77, uh, Bobby Gas, big fan. Uh, so their debut album. Um, Oh, this is an original, it's an original Portuguese copy. Um, so, yeah, well, yeah, there's not much, too much bad about this, really. Um, just one of those amazing debut albums that came out in the year 1977. Um, not produced by Brian, you know, he, he did go on to produce their next three albums, but... Um, uh, Psycho Killer is on this. Um, uh, oh, Love Comes to Town. Um, don't worry about the government. So, um, uh, yeah, so I'm very close now to collect it to having all of their albums on vinyl. So, um, yeah, that's, that's another one knocked off the, the want list. Now, the record fair, it, it ran for three days. Uh, I got all these on the Friday. Uh, didn't go on the Saturday. Now, I, I, on Sunday, I just went back, um, just on the off chance. I just came to, to have a look, really, just to see that perhaps if there was anything kind of interesting or not really in, probably intending to buy anything. But <clears throat> one of the buyers had some new stuff. And, mm, okay, so I got this in his bargain section. Ricochet by um, by Tangerine Dream. Uh, yes, had been missing this one. Um, uh, got it for uh, Fiverr, 1975. Um, so, uh, yeah, so this, um, had been looking to pick this one up. Uh, so I saw this pretty cheap copy, um, straight away grabbed it, um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant live album, um, I, I mean, th that was our best period, I think, from 70 to 75, I mean, they did go on to do good, do good stuff after, but th this is just, this period when this came out was just, they were just at the top of their game, um, and the next item, massive want list item, when I saw this, uh, this is by a band who I just, 
I was actually discussing it with Ben Costello some time prior to this, um, a band whom I never see in the wild. Uh, so I grabbed this, um, that is <clears throat> Hatfield and the North, the Rotters Club. Um, yeah, absolutely never see this band in the wild. See it posted online all the time. This and their debut album. When I saw this, I just absolutely had to grab it. And I got it for a fantastic price. Um, I got it for 13 euros for an excellent um, original UK copy, which is, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a 25 to 30 euro album, really. So to get it for that price is just, um, it's just great. Um, uh, it's, um, yeah, so Hatfield and North, kind of a Canterbury scene supergroup, uh, members of Gong, members of Henry Cow, um, Dave Stewart of Egg, um, uh, yeah, so, uh, I had I, I, yeah you know, I have listened to their stuff on YouTube previously and I've really been keeping my eyes peeled for um, their two albums. Uh, never ever seen them in the wild and then I grabbed this one for a fantastic price so I'm really happy with that. Um, the Rotters Club, um, uh, by Hatfield in the North from 1975 on Virgin. Um, now I was going to show a bunch of other stuff as well, but I think I don't really the video is running on a bit. It's 27 minutes now. Uh, I had another charity shop haul to show, but I think I'm going to have to maybe shoot another video, um, maybe another follow-up video. Uh, so I'll leave it on that just for now. Um, so uh, so thanks very much for watching, everybody, and subscribing, and um, hope you all have a great weekend.